Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. So today I will share with you my story on hyper acidity. So I always get hyper acidity yung sinisik mura ako or nang sinyong chan ko. So I always get that. And so I do a lot of reading about it. I watch videos and tips on how to avoid it. And so the tips I will be sharing with you today are the ones that really work for me. So if you're interested to know about that, then please keep on watching. Okay, so before we start, disclaimer lang, hindi po ako doctor or nurse. I don't have a medical background. So I'm just an ordinary person who has been doing a lot of reading about hyperacidity and have been able to manage it from the tips that I've read. And so the tips I will be giving you today may or may not work for you. So these are just my own personal experience. Also, before we start, I'd like to say hi first to Jay Reyes. Hi, Jay. Thank you so much for suggesting this video. So ito na yung request mo. Finally, andito na siya. So, huwag na tayo magpatumpik ng pick. Let's begin. Okay, so I have here mga 9 or 10 tips that I will share with you. And I will divide these tips into two parts. So, first one, these are the gas-gas tips. I call them the gas-gas na mga tips because they are very gas-gas na mga linya. So, I'm sure you've heard about them. And yeah, these are the ones that really work for me. These are the ones that I follow. The rest naman, these are mga personalized na mga tips. Ito yung mga in-experiment ko, tinatry ko, ganyan, and i-share ko lang din sa inyo. Okay, so let's begin. Let's start with the gas-gas tips. So, number one. Gas-gas tip number one. Eat on time. Ito siya super gas-gas talaga to, diba? Ito yung sinasabi ng mga parents natin, ng mga nakakatanda, diba? You have to eat on time. So, when you say on time, hindi, um, ideally, um, you have to have breakfast at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m., diba? Tapos lunch mo 12 um, may snack ka, tapos dinner mo naman 7 or 8 p.m. Diba? Usually ganun. That's the ideal time. Pero syempre, kanya-kanya naman tayo ng time. Iba-iba yung time natin. So, and kailangan lang, consistent lang. So, kaya, importante na kahit na hindi pa ako gutom, pag eating time na talaga, I usually eat talaga para ma-follow ko yung schedule. Parang ganun. So, that's tip number one. Gas, gas tip number one. For number two naman, in connection lang to sa number one. So, this is not too hungry, not too full. So, um, yun nga, dapat huwag kang mag-skip ng kain. Huwag ka masyadong magpagutom. So, kailangan kahit hindi ka pa masyadong gutom, kumain ka na pag-schedule mo na ng kain. Tapos, pag kumakain, hindi naman yung tipong super busog ka. Alam mo, yun yung saktong busog lang talaga. Hindi yung tipong hindi ka na makahinga sa, kabusuka, sa kabusugan mo. Diba may mga ganon? Especially pag mga handaan, ganon. Um, okay, pag may times na ganun, pero wag naman always, alam mo yun, um, kailangan i-ano mo yung chan mo na hindi siya masyadong parang ma-pressure, ganyan. Tapos, pag may times talaga, kasi di ba hindi naman natin may iwasan, may mga times talaga at pag may meeting ka or may lakad ka, ganyan, mamimiss mo yung kain mo, di ba? So, ito din, napakagasgas din siya na, na, na linya, di ba? Na kailangan pag na, na, nalipasan ka na ng gutom, um, huwag kang kumain ng heavy. Kailangan light meal lang para hindi mabigla yung chan mo. Yan. So, that's tip number two. Let's go to gas gas tip number three. So, ito naman siya, you have to know your triggers. This is very, very important. Kailangan alamin mo yung mga pagkain na nagtitrigger ng hyperacidity mo. So, the usual na mga triggers, andyan yung, of course, yung alcohol, yung caffeine, mga citrus na fruits, uh, mga juices, ganyan. Ano pa ba? Um, chocolate, yan, mga mint, marami yan. Alamin mo kung ano yung food triggers mo para alam mo kung ano yung iiwasan mo. So, you can actually do food diary. Meron ako nabasa before na you keep a food diary para alam mo kung ano yung mga, nat, uh, ano yung kinain mo that day na, 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 nung na-trigger yung hyperacidity mo. Parang ganun. Pero in my case, hindi naman ako ng food diary. Um, tinandaan ko lang talaga. Kung baga, parang nung nangyari siya, ay, may kinain ko, ganun. But of course, you can do the food diary if you want. Para at least matrack mo siya. Yun. So, okay, so let's go to gas gas tip number four. So, pang-apat na tayo. So, this is in connection to the third one, which is uh, about triggers. So, ito naman is you have to manage your stress. So, stress also triggers hyperacidity. Especially pag nagagalit ka or basta anything na napipressure ka sa work mo, anything. Basta pag stress, it also causes hyperacidity. So, or trigger siya. Uh, and so, you have to be able to manage your stress. Marami namang paraan. So, depending kung ano yung mga hilig mong gawin, ano yung mga hobbies mo, ganyan. So, you do your hobbies, you read, you um, anything, any activity that will help you de-stress. So, marami. Okay, so, let's go to number five. So, gas gas tip number five is do not lie down after eating. Just color, di ba? Napaka-basic niya. Super gas-gas talaga. And it's true. 
'di ba? Um, kailangan uh, after mong kumain, huwag ka munang humiga agad. Hello naman, 'di ba? Um, kailangan maglakad-lakad ka or nasa bahay lang naman tayo, hindi naman nakakalakad. So, like you you wash the dishes or you, you do something else. Basta huwag ka lang humiga. Uh, kasi siyempre after eating, yung chanwa is working already, 'di ba? Para ma-digest yung pagkain mo. So, kung hihiga ka, there is a chance na aakyat lang yung acid sa aakyat yung acid kasi humiga ka eh. Diba? So, yun. Do not lie down after eating. Okay? Okay, let's go to the last gas-gas tip. And itong pinaka-last, nilas ko talaga siya kasi sobrang laki ng help niya. So, uh, and I was so amazed na, oo nga pala, totoo pala siya talaga. Nakatulong talaga siya ng bonggang-bongga sa akin. And hindi ko alam if this is a gas-gas tip kasi recently ko lang naman siya na na-learn uh, when I was uh, watching videos about hyperacidity, GERD, heartburn, yun naman yung mga kasama niyo usually, diba? gastritis, ganyan. So, um, recently ko lang talaga siya nalaman na tip. And when I started following it, talagang na-notice ko na, ay, oo nga, hindi na talaga ako nakakaramdam ng, ng ganun. Yung, kasi minsan yung, alam mo yung, um, nagdidighay ka na ng ma maasin, ganun, ganun kalala yung hypersidity ko. And so, ito yon Hindi ko alam paano siya explain. <laughs> Pero ito siya. You have to sleep at an elevated angle elevated level, basta elevated, basta, ano, <laughs> hindi ko na pa na siya explain, basta elevated kang matulog, hindi flat. So, if you're someone who sleeps flat, like me, ako naka, tihaya kasi ako matulog, hindi ako pasay, tihaya talaga ganun. So, um, it was an adjustment for me, pero, it really has been a big help for me. So, kailangan pag natutulog ka, hindi nga naka-flat, medyo naka-elevate ng konti, ito na lang, So, some of this is you, di ba? So, kailangan naka-elevate ng konti. Yung, when you sleep, naka-elevate ng konti. Yung upper body mo. Hindi, necessary, hindi yung dito lang ha. Kailangan, dito talaga siya sa like upper body. Naka-elevate talaga. So, you can add like two pillows siguro. And kailangan, hindi lang siya dito sa leeg. It should be at, up to here. Yan, sa likod. Kailangan nakahiga ka, elevated Uh, elevated yung paghiga mo para hindi siya umakyat. Kasi since it's liquid, it follows the flow of gravity. ba diba? So, pag nakahiga ka, nagpapalo din siya. Umakyat siya. So, that's why. Yun. And it's really, really, it has really helped me ever since I started doing that, na natutulog ako, na elevated, talagang, there is a big change. Sobra, as in big change. You try it, and believe me, malaking tulong siya sa hyperacidity nyo. So, those are the six gas-gas tips na pina-follow ko that help me manage my hypersidity. So, recap lang natin ng konti. Of course, number one is eat on time. Uh, second is not too hungry, not too full. Huwag masyadong gutom, masyadong busog. Um, know your triggers, of course. Food triggers. Next is manage your stress. Fifth is wag uh, humiga after kain. And of course, the last one is elevated yung paghiga. So, I hope I'm able to explain that uh, properly. If you have questions about that, question lang kayo sa baba. Okay? Okay, so let's go naman to the second part, which are mga personalized tips. So, again, itong mga to, experiment ko lang to, tinry ko lang kasi nabasa ko na okay daw. And then, tinry ko. And so, for okay naman, napansin ko. So, isi-share ko lang sa inyo para in case gusto nyo itry, wala namang harm if you will try it. So, yan, I just hope na maybe mag-work sa inyo. So, at least nakatulong ako, ba diba? So, yun. Okay, so number one is banana. So, I actually got this um, information from Doc Willie Ong. Sure, kailan nyo naman si Doc Willie Ong. If you have not um, heard about him, just go, you go to YouTube and you type Doc Willie Ong. He has a lot of videos, mga advice about different um, illnesses. And the good thing about him is that he's into home remedies. Hindi siya yung tipong like gamot agad. Parang he actually believes in home remedies um, and I'm also into home remedies talagang I'm always leaning towards home remedies kasi para sa akin mas, you know, parang mas safe siya tsaka mas sustainable, alam mo yun, so try to watch it, in his video on hypersidity, isa sa mga scenario niya is yung saging kasi he gets hypersidity din pala and yun ang ginagawa niya, so he eats like, like maliit na, ano lang, parang hinahati-hati niya yung saging and then pag nangangasimin siya niya kumakain siya ng siguro like a bite or two, ganun. Tapos, iniinuman niya ng maligamgam na water. So, I tried that kasi there was a time na bumili ako ng tablia na 
um, yung original talaga na tablia, tapos sobrang bango, and then bumili ako, and then, you know, nakalimutan ko na <laughs> hindi pala siya pwede, at nakalimutan ko na trigger pala siya, ayun. So, ang bango-bango niya kasi, ano siya, pure siya, tapos, yun, siya, ginawa namin yung chapurado ni Roy, and, yan, yeah, nag-trigger talaga siya. Uh, minsan kasi may tendency akong ganyan, pag parang okay na yung chan ko, wala akong nararamdaman, parang na naaalala ko na naman agad yung mga triggers ko. Parang nakalimutan ko na triggers sila, naaalala ko yung mga masasarap na pagkain na yun. And so, yeah, and then yun, na-trigger siya ulit. So, um, uh, tinray ko yung banana and it really, it really works. Talagang kumakalma yung, yung chan ko, yung ganun. So, it really helps. So, but okay, so let's go to number two, and that is DC or virgin coconut oil. And the one that I'm using is this one. This is from ProSource. This is their extra virgin coconut oil. So, I've been using this one uh, for my um, hyperacidity din kasi nabasa ko na okay din siya. But actually, binili ko talaga siya for my constipation. So, it's also good for constipation, but it also helps with hyperacidity. Parang nakakalma siya. And also, it also parang, di ba minsan pag, um, sa sobrang pangangasim ng chan mo, umakit siya. Kasi I have that eh. Tapos, nagkaka-sore throat ako sa, especially pag nagdighay, dumighay ako ng maasim, sore throat dito. And so, parang kinocoat niya rin dito yung, yung throat ko. So, it's really helpful for me. I, I actually drink this in the morning on an empty stomach. So, I started with one tablespoon. Actually, ito yung ginagamit ko yung takit niya. So, isang ganito, Tapos, I, after siguro a week, nag na ako. So, ideally, dalawang tablespoon talaga siya. Pero, syempre, hindi naman siya kaaya-aya yung lasa niya, diba? Nakaka, nakakadidi naman talaga siya. For most people, they will always say, my God, nakakadidi talaga yung VCO. Pero, it has a lot of good benefits. And so, tiis, ano na lang, tiis na lang talaga. So, I started with one tablespoon and then, I, na, nag, two tablespoons ako after siguro a week or a week or two if hindi mo talaga kaya. So, yun. Hanggang masanay ka lang. So, VCO. Let's go to number three, and that is look for alternatives. So, ito naman siya. It's very specific to coffee. Coffee lang talaga. Kasi wala naman ako ibang alternative for tomatoes or chocolate. Wala namang alternative dun. So, um, kapi lang talaga. So, when I stop drinking coffee because of palpitations and eventually for hyperacidity, I turn to, naghanap ako ng alternative na parang hindi siya matitrigger. So, automatic hindi naman siya naging problema kasi my parents already switched to natural coffee. And that coffee is this one. Ito yung ginagamit namin na kape sa bahay. And so, every time umuwi ako, ito yung binibitbit ko from sa amin kasi hindi ko nabibili ito here in Cebu. Hindi siya available. So, it's only available in Mindanao. And so, yeah, ito yung ginagamit ko. And actually, may isa pang isa pang corn coffee na iniinom yung parents ko, and that is called Robusta. Mas matapang yun, and that's pure corn coffee. So, corn coffee is a lot of good benefits, and um, if you wanna watch the video where I talked about this, um, lalik ko sa baba yung link. So, that's where actually Jay asked the question about hypersidity. Dun, dun siya nag-suggest. And so, yeah. There's a lot of good benefits aside from yung sa hindi siya nangangasigin siya ko, it, marami din siyang benefits. And, of course, hindi naman siya kasing sarap talaga ng kape. <laughs> of course, di ba? It has a different taste and it also has its own aroma. So, okay din siya. Hindi naman ako nag na nagkaroon ng problem with the transition from yung natural coffee, ay from yung usual na coffee to natural coffee kasi somehow, masarap din siya. Alam mo yun, meron din siyang aroma na kakaiba din na somehow na-love ko rin siya. So, until now, I'm still drinking it yun yung guto ko na kape kasi syempre yun ang safe ko na kape. And you can also buy decaf coffee. May available naman na decaf coffee sa Nescafe, di ba? So you can also buy that. Para pag may mga times na tayo kung magkape, at least you have the decaf na um, option. Pero syempre yung decaf na coffee, hindi yun like free of caffeine talaga ha. Meron pa rin siyang like mga 4 milligrams of caffeine. Of course, mas ano, lesser than that. Pero may caffeine pa rin siya. Pero somehow, um, konti lang yung uh, content, diba? So, yun. And last but not the least is you should have some medicine in hand. So, in case lang naman na kailangan mo, yung sobrang in case lang talaga, um, you should have some antacid na available sa bahay nyo in case na hindi talaga siya kaila, hindi na talaga siya marimedyohan, alam mo yun. So, ako usually meron akong antacid like um, si Meko. Uh, I like si Meko. I also like 
Kremlin S, yung mga yun, diba? usual naman yun ng mga antase, di ba? I also have maalox, I think. Yun. So, uh, so far, hindi pa naman ako nag-respect. So, meron lang talaga akong available para in, ca- in case lang. Pero, sa, sa awa ng Diyos, hindi pa ako nag-respect. Hindi ko pa sila nagagamit. So, yun. And so, as much as possible, then I also try to avoid using yung mga antacid. Hindi kasi din siya pwede na parati kang uminom ng ganun. So, yun. Pero, maganda din if you have stock in case lang. Okay? Okay, so that's it. Those are the tips that I follow on how to manage hyperacidity. Sana may natutunan kayo. Sana may napulot kayo somehow. If you do have any questions about anything that I've mentioned in the video, please let me know in the comment section down below. Or if you have suggestions about home remedies and work sa inyo, please let me know. I'd be very, very interested in that. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!